You guys know I feel very, very strongly about this subject considering I have struggled with my own self-confidence for as long as I can remember. I still struggle with my self-confidence to this very day, but I am definitely a lot more self-confident than I used to be. And that's why I feel so passionate about this subject. Like I'm literally writing a book on how to be self-confident. I'm going to make a course on how to be self-confident. Follow me on Instagram if you wanna know when they go live. As women, we have been told since the dawn of time that in order to fit in and be accepted and be considered beautiful, we have to look a certain way. Enter the beauty standard. Beauty standards are the individual qualifications that every single woman must meet in order to be accepted in society or to be considered beautiful. What happens if we don't meet those beauty standards? Well, as I know, and you guys probably know, we are made to feel like we're not good enough, like we're ugly, that we need to change the way we look. And I don't know if I'm just speaking for myself here, but I feel like as a collective, we as women are kind of constantly striving to meet this unrealistic expectation of what we are supposed to look like. And then we wonder why the majority of us feel down about ourselves or diet until we're starving or tweak our faces with fillers and Botox or spend money that we don't have on super expensive makeup and skincare products that promise to change the way we look. I feel bad for us. <laughs> now I know it's one thing for me to get on my like speaker box and just tell everyone to accept the way they look, to accept your flaws, to love yourself the way you are. And there are some of us who can actually reach that level of self-confidence and can can successfully manage to ignore society's pressures on us, but the reality is a lot of us can't. And to be honest, it is not our fault. We have been conditioned since childhood to believe that girls and women are supposed to look a certain way. Look at Barbie, brats, Disney princesses. Whilst admittedly there is more of an effort now to be more inclusive, back in my day most of these characters were white with little noses, big eyes, pouty lips, perfect skin, slim figures, and waists barely bigger than their necks. So even as children we are beginning to subconsciously judge ourselves on what we look like. If we already subconsciously realize as children that we don't actually look like these characters and what the ideal female is supposed to look like, it plants the seeds in our minds that we are not good enough and that we are not beautiful. So if you have literally felt crap about yourself since you were a little kid for as long as you can remember, I don't blame you because I was like that too. And it's not your fault and it's not my fault. We have literally been purposely made to feel that way since we were little girls. Now, not only that, but there are many aspects of being human that are biologically normal that for some reason we as women are not allowed to have. Society has deemed it unacceptable for women to have body hair, stretch marks, cellulite, acne, skin texture, wrinkles, weight gain, pores, scars. And if you do possess any of these natural bodily attributes, Girl, you better get rid of it. It is completely unacceptable in today's day and age to look like a human being, even though you are in fact a human being. If you look at any of the women that we as a society have placed up on a pedestal, such as influencers or celebrities, you will see that they go to great efforts to disguise the fact that they are also human beings with cellulite and weight gain and body hair and imperfect skin because they know that if we realize that they aren't perfect and that they don't naturally meet these beauty standards either, that we won't idolize them anymore. So they have to maintain this level of unattainable perfection in order to have society keep idolizing them. If you look at any of the female figures that perpetuate the beauty ideal, you'll see that the majority of them were actually devised by powerful, rich men. A man called Carter Bryant created the Bratz doll. It was essentially a crew of men who designed and animated the Disney princesses. My personal favorite childhood toy, Barbie, she was actually based on a German doll called Lily, which wouldn't really be a problem, except that Lily was essentially a call girl, sex symbol character created by a guy called Reinhard Boythine and aimed at men. And even nowadays, if you guys really want to go deep into the rabbit hole, have a look at the major skincare and makeup brands. You will see that the majority of these massive conglomerates, they are actually owned and run and created by, again, rich, powerful men. And I'm not necessarily saying that's a bad thing. Like I love men. I am not a man hater at all. It's just something to be aware of. Could it be that we are still allowing men to dictate in an underhanded way what we as women are supposed to look like? Just food for thought. It seems as though these unrealistic beauty expectations that none of us can actually meet have trickled down through the generations and you can see the effects on social media and Instagram today. Ever noticed how the majority of the big Insta models or influencers all look the same? 
the same eyes, the same nose, same body shape, same hair. If you think that they all naturally look like that, you are wrong. As you can see, these girls all used to look very different and very beautiful in their differences. What we've been conditioned to think is beautiful as children has carried through to the present day with horrendous results on our self-confidence. Our beauty standards have gone so far off the Richter scale that it's not enough now to simply tweak our faces to resemble a Bratz doll. Mm -mm. Now we need to look like cats. The cat eye or foxy eye lift is a procedure becoming more and more popular on social media where the skin at the corner of the eyes is cut and then lifted and sewed back into place giving a tighter cat eye effect. This procedure was originally designed for middle to mature age women who were struggling with excess loose hooded eye skin where they would struggle to see because of the loose skin. So you can see how that procedure then would become necessary. However, plastic surgeon Dr. Ray Tavern says that the majority of his patients are now under the age of 40, with most being between the age of 20 and 30. You know that our beauty standards have just become way too extreme when women are literally getting surgery to look like foxes. And it doesn't stop there. Did you know that there is actually a mathematical equation designed in order to tell whether a woman is beautiful or not? This mathematical equation is what's known as the golden ratio. In order to determine whether a woman is beautiful or not, the length and width of her face is measured and then the results are divided. <laughs> if her measurements and results are equal, then the woman is beautiful. And if not, I don't know, is she ugly? What is this? According to the golden ratio, Bella Hadid has the most beautiful face in the world, yet her sister Gigi, based on these standards, she is not considered beautiful at all. Like, she doesn't even make the scale. If she's a supermodel and yet she doesn't live up to these standards, is it any wonder that we as women, as a collective, often feel like we are never ever going to be good enough? So that then sparked my interest in finding out which other famous women, if any, meet these beauty standards. I discovered that not one single woman naturally met those beauty standards. However, they did have individual facial features that were were considered acceptable. According to the Harley Street plastic surgeon Dr. Julian De Silva, Kate Middleton's nose is mathematically almost perfect. Dr. Silva says that Kate Middleton's nose has 106 degree nasal tip rotation, which is backed up by research that noses between 104 and 108 degrees are the most beautiful. Oh, good grief. <laughs> Megan Fox has the most beautiful eyes. Angelina Jolie has the best lips. Poor Jennifer Aniston's face doesn't register on the scale at all. However, her saving grace is that she has a great chin and jawline. Scarlett Johansson had the best forehead and Giselle Bunchen had the best hair. So then I was thinking, what if one woman was blessed enough to have all these attributes in the one face? This would probably be the perfect female. So then I got curious and I went over to Photoshop and did a little mishmash of these facial features to see what it would look like. So we have Megan's eyes, Angelina's lips, Kate's nose, Jen's chin, Scarlett's forehead and Giselle's Hair. I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty stunned with the results. <laughs> Does this character not remind you of a lot of the top influencers and insta models and beauty gurus that you see online, or is it just me? Let's not forget here, the beauty standard is constantly evolving. It is always changing. It is not stagnant. Faces go in and out of fashion. Throughout history, the beauty ideal for women has been constantly evolving. Back in Elizabethan times, everybody wanted to look like Queen Elizabeth. I know we all want to be tanned now, but back then, a pale complexion was considered like the epitome of beauty. Being pale was considered a sign of good health and prestige that only the upper class could achieve because the middle to lower classes would all be tanned because they were outside working in the fields all day. The Renaissance ideal of a perfect woman was fair hair, pallid complexion, bright eyes, and red lips. Now, this looks kind of weird to today's beauty standards, but a sign of aristocracy back then was to have super thin, super high arched eyebrows, which gave the illusion of a really, really high forehead. Then if we fast forward to the 1920s, the rosebud pout was all the rage, which is very different to the desired lip shape of today. The rosebud pout was all about a pointed, small upper lip with a slightly fuller bottom lip. The women of the 1920s plucked their eyebrows to absolute oblivion and then penciled them back in in super thin arches. However, by the 1950s, full brows were back and healthy round faces with red lips were considered beautiful. Then if we speed on through through to the 1970s, a more natural beauty standard emerged. The goal here was super tanned, glowing skin, minimal makeup, and super athletic figures. Then the beauty standard in the 80s and the 90s changed a little bit. It was kind of a mix match between two. So you had either the super punk rocker like Madonna back in the day, where the beauty standard was as if you actually didn't care about your looks at all, or the supermodel glam of like Claudia Schiffer, 
Stephanie Seymour. Fast forward to today, and as you guys well know, our beauty standards now are quite literally just off the Richter scale. There is not one single one of us that can actually naturally live up to these beauty standards because we aren't brat dolls. Now, what this all essentially boils down to is that if you feel like you aren't good enough, if you feel like you don't fit into these beauty standards, that you don't reach these beauty expectations and that you are ugly or you feel like you aren't beautiful or you aren't pretty enough, know that these beauty standards were literally created so that you could never reach them. I know you're probably thinking, oh, surely not, why would that be? Because guys, think about it. If we can't naturally meet these beauty expectations, we are going to spend our money trying. Literally stop and think about how much money you spend every year on trying to be beautiful. Haircut, hair color, makeup, skincare, clothing, nail polish, fake nails, manicures, pedicures, body hair removal in the form of razors, epilators, waxing, laser, fake tan, fake tan remover, high heels to make us look taller, fillers, Botox, plastic surgery, lash extensions, brow tattoos, microblading, teeth whitening, teeth veneers. The list goes on and on and on. Don't forget guys that the beauty industry is a multi-billion dollar industry and if we as women were content and happy with how we looked naturally and we didn't feel the need to beautify ourselves or change ourselves in any way shape or form then these powerful corporations who quite literally make money off women's insecurities would lose out and so the cycle continues. So if you're watching this and you feel like you're not beautiful and that you're never going to live up to these beauty standards you're probably right. You and me and the girl down the road and your auntie and that Insta model and that influencer, not one single one of us is ever, ever going to be able to naturally live up to these beauty standards. And that's why you see so many of us changing our appearances with fillers and Botox and literally anything else we can get our hands on in order to try and fit into this box of what is accepted for a woman to look like. But the empowering part of it is, is that we as women, we have the power to ignore these beauty standards, to just blast them out of our vision, forget they exist and realize that no mathematical equations or facial mapping or fillers or Botox or surgery or even makeup and skincare can make someone beautiful. Beauty is so much more than what someone physically looks like. It's their presence it's their aura, it's their personality and their kindness and how they make you feel about yourself. And to minimize someone's beauty based on simply their physical attributes is just quite literally doing all of womankind a disservice. Now guys, I could keep talking about this for days, but I'm not going to because I know this video is going to be long enough as it is, hence why I'm writing a book on the subject and doing a course on the subject so I can go way more in depth and talk way more about this than I have the chance to right here. But if you are feeling down about yourself, please know that you are not the only one. I feel down about myself on a weekly basis, if not sometimes a daily basis. And I truly feel like we as women are on a journey kind of reclaiming our own sovereign beauty. I'm gonna leave this video here. I love you so much. You are absolutely perfect as you are. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.